Oh yes, voluntary breaks. I'm gonna get into why I'm calling it voluntary breaks versus involuntary breaks because I feel like there's a little bit of a slight difference between the two, but voluntary breaks, um, I am notorious for this. I am just super self-conscious about when I take a break and like the latest time I have uploaded on stuff, whether it be Instagram, DA, Twitter. I've gotten better about uh, keeping a routine of like posting and interacting and engaging. But I, back in the day, even two years ago, I would just take giant breaks where you would see huge monthly gaps in when I last updated something. I mean, this is very true if you ever look at my DA. This is very true if you ever look at my DA and you see from the last time I've posted to like all the couple of months ago and like there are just sometimes really big months. And I, <laughs> I actually, um, specifically for that site, I actually hit 200 watchers on three separate dates because I am so, I guess, laid back that I take such long breaks that since people never hear from me ever again, they kind of just stop following me and are like, okay, whatever, I'm moving on. This person isn't posting content anymore or po uploading. Um, I first hit 200 watchers on DA on 9-11-2015. That was over five years ago. And then again on um, for 17 2020 so that's... April, that's April. So first time was September 11th, 2015. Next time was April 17th, 2020, five years later after the fact. And if that doesn't tell you how much I enjoy my breaks, or maybe I'm just a little bit lazy, it's kind of like a borderline thing there. Voluntary breaks can also kind of lead into being lazy, but that's something else I'm, I'm gonna, that's a tangent, that's a side thought. Maybe I'll talk about it, maybe I won't. And then again, um, on September 28th, 2020. So I guess at least there's only a couple of months difference between April 17th and then September 28th in the same year, but I've hit 200 watchers three different times on DeviantArt, and I think it's mostly due to the fact that I would just, I don't update very often, I take long breaks, and oh my goodness. Now, um, why am I saying voluntary breaks? So, the difference between voluntary and involuntary. So I'll just go to the simple Google definition of voluntary, which is done or given... Wait, no. Excuse me, let me back up. <coughs> Thank you, dyslexia. Voluntary definition is done, given, or acting of one's own free will. So, that's why I'm saying you yourself are taking the conscientious effort of being like, hey guys, I'm doing a vacay, I'm going on a break, I'm taking time to myself, and you don't really have any real true specific reason for it other than you just wanna take this break for yourself, which I think is good. Voluntary breaks are good. Um, and then of course there's involuntary, which is done without will or conscientious control. Consciousness control. Ah, oh, conscientious, oh my goodness. Me pronouncing all the words wrong and everything, but then it won't sound fun, and I like pronouncing words wrong for the friend of it. Anyway, done without will or conscious control. That's involuntary, and um, I guess it's kind of difficult, because I have um, something I posted on my tapas, where, uh, I basically let everybody know on July 22nd, hey, um, I think maybe I have two perfect examples of one's involuntary and one is voluntary, because on July 22nd, I basically put a, a message out to everybody saying, hey, letting, quote unquote, letting everyone know that the next update shall be on August 5th. If you've known me or taken a look at my track record, I post on Wednesday afternoon one page for every Wednesday of the month on one of my stories, the total minimum of four pages a month. Some months just so happen to have an extra Wednesday and usually I would give an extra page for whichever series I'm updating, but for right now, I'm using that extra week to take a personal break. Thank you everyone for your valued support and I shall see y'all on August 5th. That right there is a perfect example of me saying, hey, 
I'm just taking a personal break, I'm taking an extra week, and I'll see you all on August 5th, and I'll have more story updates for you guys, and there we go. That's a perfect example of a voluntary break. And then, uh, <laughs> August 3rd rolls around, and I put another update on Tapas, which I feel like is a good example for an involuntary break. Because... Some basically life happened, and I realized that I was unable to make an update. So, August 3rd post, I say, quote, As per my previous post about August 5th, about August in general, I have been hit with a bunch of personal stressors in relation to work and COVID. Henceforth, I've been unable to draw. With a heavy heart, all of my stories will be on hiatus until further notice. Thank you, everyone, for loving your loving support. I hope to get back to it someday. So, yes, I think that is a perfect example of an involuntary break because basically these stressors came out and there was nothing I really could do about them to really control them. And it was just worsening my mood to where I just had to tell everybody, hey, I, I gotta, I, I can't be working. I can't be putting my nose to the grindstone and cranking out pages and working extensively on my stories right now. I just need to get away. And I think that's kind of like the difference between involuntary and voluntary, in my opinion, is voluntary is like, hey, I'm just making this personal decision for myself, I'm in a good mindset, I'm okay, I'm doing okay, I just kind of want to take a personal break. And then involuntary, life happens, something gets in the way, um, it could be anything from work to school to family, um, and all kinds of different stressors out there in the world, that that gets in the way, and so you kind of take an almost involuntary break. And I guess you could say to this day, I still haven't updated my stories. I still haven't really worked on them. So I'm still kind of in that involuntary break mode. But going back to basically voluntary breaks and taking the personal decision, the personal choice of deciding to take a break. And long story short, they are needed. They are so needed, my peeps. They are so needed. Breaks, I like to think of it as um, R, R cubed because I like also alliteration, but I feel like breaks, they allow time to rest, they allow time to rethink, and they allow time to re-energize. And I think those are just so important. Um, when you're resting, I feel like when you're taking a break and you're resting, do something different. Do something different than your normal craft. Like, for me, it's drawing. So I've had a tendency to pick up the crochet hook and started crocheting. I would do paper crafts. I would even just kind of maybe lounge and binge YouTube a little bit, maybe watch a little bit of Netflix. I feel like doing something different than the usual rhythm of things is is well warranted. I feel like everybody needs to do that because I feel like if you don't rest and maybe try something different, like to get away from your actual craft that you really want to work at and polish, um, it prevents burnout. And burnout is something I'll be talking about in a different video, but yes, it prevents burnout. Um, and then of course, rethinking. I also feel like when you are taking a break, it allows a nice moment in time for you to evaluate your craft. And um, personally for me, during this break of my comics, even though it's kind of involuntary, but it's also evolved into voluntary. But anyway, that aside, um, I feel like it has allowed the ability for me to basically look at my drawing skills, look at where I'm at, and then deciding for myself, you know what? I want to learn or I want to try something new. And the biggest thing that I did when I had to rethink and reevaluate my art and my craft was I realized that I wasn't really following a lot of artist channels on my YouTube. And so sometimes when I would come onto this platform and I would want to have something put in the background, most of it was just gaming, which wasn't bad. But because I had that for so long that I didn't, it didn't really like uh, click with me 
and inspire and motivate me to draw more. So I realized, you know what? Something needs to change. When I usually put on YouTube, I usually feel inspired to draw and that's not happening anymore. Maybe I need to start finding other resources and other things to inspire me to do this. And so I started watching more art-based channels. I started watching channels that like I was really inspired by the art, their art. I started watching channels where they basically started talking about, hey, this is a good way to get out of a rut. Basically like art advice channels. And that actually really helped me. And sometimes having, oh my goodness, it's on vibrate. I'm so sorry, my phone, why are you on vibrate? I put you on silent, what is going on? Oh, excuse me, so sorry. I hope you didn't hear the bzz, bzz in the background, and if you did, I guess I'm just vocally saying there was bzz, bzz going on in the background. But anyway, I started watching art channels, and through watching those art channels, it really inspired me to be like, Hey, I'm just gonna start drawing. I'm just gonna start drawing what I want, and just, like, being a little less strict on myself. And that was the other thing that I learned is... Usually I myself would be such a stickler on things like proportions and I think proportions is basically like a huge like it's like a gatekeeper thing for me like go connecting to my art and making good art was the overthinking of proportions and basically I started telling myself you know what I'm sick and tired of feeling like just because the proportions aren't right it would like take me like an hour just to get a basic body sketch down and it started making me mad and it made me feel upset that eventually all of those negative thoughts I would just kind of stop drawing or I would have um, the syndrome where you just have a whole bunch of uncompleted sketches like you would kind of sketch something up but you would never complete it and that's true for a lot of my sketchbooks all because I hated the proportions. I was such a stickler, too strict to myself, that eventually I started telling myself maybe I should try my hand more at stylization. And for those of you who can't tell, currently at this point in time, if you see me on Twitter, if you see me be active on there, or even a little bit through my um, track record of uh, my YouTube videos, like speed draws and stuff, I do a lot of has been themed. Um, art at the moment and honestly I am enjoying that I am loving running with it just because the style of has been and Vivzy Pop's style is like it breaks those rules it breaks those proportion rules and kind of throws them out on in the out the window <laughs> it basically is like here's the general idea of somebody's body and you kind of get the gist but there you go and I've been, I've been having so much fun with that, is basically really trying my hand at stylization. And so that way it's like, here's the general idea of the body and how the proportions should be, but I myself am not so strict anymore. And I think because I'm taking a break, because I have the ability to rethink and evaluate my art and my craft, it's made me realize, oh my goodness! I can actually not be a stickler on proportions and still draw good art. <laughs> and I guess that kind of goes into the idea of when I was watching some art channels. Side tangent here, I'll come back to my other thing of re-energize, but side tangent of learning how some people were basically, a couple art channels were talking about you need to learn the rules before you break them and how they say that that's kind of like something in art that um, is kind of like, I, in some people's opinion, bad art advice. And by playing with the stylization and breaking proportions, I've kind of understood and really, oh, it's like, it's an epiphany for me. Like, I understand why people say that now. But yeah, anyway, rethinking, it's good. It's good to evaluate your craft. And then of course, lastly, re-energize. Taking breaks are so important because you get to re-energize yourself and it really comes back and down to the idea of you're coming back with fresh eyes. It's no different than if you were drawing something and you were really mad at this drawing and you really hated this drawing and then you just told yourself, okay, I'm stopping, I'm taking a break, I'm walking away. 
and then you come back to it. And I've even noticed a lot in my old art where at the time, as soon as I finished it, as soon as I completed it, I kind of just hated it. I disliked it. I was like, ugh, this looks ugly to me and I don't like it. But then even years later, I would come back and be like, oh my God, this old piece of artwork that I thought was kind of crappy is actually really good. And it's not as bad as I thought it was. So re-energizing is really good because you get to come back to your craft. For me, it's specifically art. And also you, I feel like um, having that newfound energy I have found, I've basically um, found new discoveries, whether it be about my art, whether it be about myself, and um, a lot of it for these new discoveries are actually stories and characters. And the example is, um, the example that I'll use is specifically for some of my personal stories, if I didn't take these breaks, the way I would tell you these stories, the way that these stories would open up and unfold would be completely different two years ago, plot and characters, than it is today. And um, and I'll probably maybe reveal this uh, at some point, but right now I um, don't have a totally under, I don't have it totally under wraps, but I actually, when I came back with fresh eyes, I discovered something about one of my characters where I was like, oh my goodness, this actually fits my character so much better than this. And long story short, I had a discovery that one of my characters is Arrow Ace, and I felt like that was just so um, amazing to discover that and being like, hey, actually, my character fits this part of the spectrum, and actually putting my, one of my characters on the spectrum just made me feel so proud and so happy that it's like, if I wrote the story of how that character was and is, like, even a few years ago to today, it would just... The story two years ago would be so much more broken, and then the story today makes so much more sense, so I'm really excited for that, and and it's so nice. I'm just so proud, so proud of myself, but... Yes, taking breaks, they're needed. They give you time to rest, rethink, and re-energize. And I guess, long story short, as I begin to wrap up this video a little bit, um, the biggest thing that I've learned is do not, do not, moral of the story, end of the day, do not try to rush out of your, your personal break. Don't try to rush yourself to get back to something. And I really, it's, I'm even trying this myself. It's really difficult for me myself to do this just because, um, remember I posted that thing on Tapas on August 3rd about, hey, I'm my, all my stuff is on hiatus. All of my stories are on hiatus and they currently still are on hiatus. And it's, it's a little difficult for me because I know that a break is needed. A break is needed to basically just de-stress and go through all the three things I just talked about, resting, rethinking, and re-energizing, and yet there's this, like, impatience, there's this, you know, urge to be like, oh no, I'm, I'm not getting back to my stuff, before I know it, my hiatus from a couple of months will turn into like three years, and I've had the terrible habit of doing that, especially on DA, I mean, I basically told you, hitting 200 watchers three different times, and there literally was a five-year gap on one of those times. So, it's, it's really hard for me, even myself, like, you know, it's kind of like, um, I can talk the talk, but can I walk the walk? I'm trying, I really am, to basically not rush back into things. I'm trying to tell myself, okay, all right, brain, I hear you, I understand, you feel like if you don't get back to it, it's no longer going to be relevant, maybe your art style would change too much, that the first couple of pages you made, you might have to rework. I, I get it, but we need to stop. We need to not rush ourselves and be impatient and basically allow ourselves to de-stress allow ourselves to relax. And I think that's the biggest thing is when you're taking a break and you are not relaxing, I personally don't believe you are actually taking a break. I think you're just 
self, you know, um, subconsciously rushing yourself of like, oh, um, you, you're trying to rationalize, like, oh, I played some video games, I did this, I did that, and now I can get back to my art, and then suddenly you get back to your craft, your art, and you're in the same rut as you were when you first started, and I feel like that's why it's really hard to basically, uh, Oh, what's the word? I don't know what the word is, but it's basically hard to not rush yourself, especially for any of those out there that are a little impatient to try to get back to a couple of things, like getting back to your stories, your art, whatever it is. So, yes, take breaks. It's okay to take breaks. I cannot stress that enough. If anything, taking breaks allows you to basically level up so much more than if you just constantly put your nose to the grindstone and kept making more content, content after content after content after content. It allows you to basically be like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna take a step back. I'm gonna rethink some things. I And you might even discover something new, whether that be about yourself, whether that be about your work, whether it be about your stories, your characters, your content in general. And overall, it's a good thing. However, it's only a good thing if you yourself allow it to be. So that really goes into the stressor of when you're taking breaks, don't rush out of them. I feel like when you come to a point where you truly realize that you are relaxed with what's going on in your craft, whether you're truly relaxed and kind of have a better sen a sense and state of mind, that means the break is working. But if you are trying to rush yourself, naturally the break probably isn't working and that deals with the whole side of mentality that even i myself am struggling to work at but yes thank you my amazing peeps my amazing enthusiasts my magenta knights for watching this video please be sure to give it a like comment down below um what's something that you might have learned when you yourself have taken a break maybe comment down below you know, even tell me like, hey, it's really hard for me to take breaks. You know, just engage with me. I really want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts, your comments, and um, I would love to see them. Also, remember, I am not just on this platform of YouTube. I'm on other platforms. Tapas has my stories. DeviantArt has my majority artworks. Um, Twitter is kind of like where I just go and engage and, and talk. I feel like Twitter is the best way to reach to reach out to me because I feel like that's the best way that I get to engage with uh, my own community, but other communities, artist communities, and even fandom communities, which I currently have just totally dive bombed into, and that's okay. Instagram is a nice place for not only my crafts, but also for my art, so it's kind of like a mixture. Maybe sometimes I'll put selfies up there, maybe I'll put some photos. I really like taking pictures of wildlife so far. We have wild bunnies in our front yard, and they are adorable, and as fall kind of slowly slides into winter over here, I just know I'm not going to see them much anymore, and that makes me sad. So anytime I wake up really early and I see bunnies, I, I tell myself, it's going to be a good day, I saw the wild buns. <laughs> they're just so cute. They're round and fluffy and they're adorable, you guys. Oh my goodness. And then lastly, the newest thing that I put was Tumblr. I have a Tumblr, which is kind of like DA, where I get to upload my art, but the only difference with Tumblr is that if you ask any of my characters a question, I may just respond with a drawn response. Maybe not just a written response, but a drawn response. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Give a like, comment, and please, please, please subscribe. I checked my analytics the other day, and apparently only about 15% are actually subscribed, which I don't mind because that tells me currently right now I have about 30, I have 30, actually accurately 31 subscribers. So they said about 85% of it was people who are, are not subscribed, which I don't mind because I like to think of it this way. I have about 30 subscribers and I did the math. And I was like, okay, 85% aren't subscribed. So that kind of rounds about in total of 200 people, possibly, possibly watching me in 30 of those, 31 of those 200 are actually subscribed. So I got about 170, 169 of y'all out there being ghost watchers. And that kind of makes me excited because I'm like, mm, y'all still have 
a ghost army in my classroom of subscribers. And that's a really fun and adorable thought because I'm creative like that and crazy. But anyway, yes, please subscribe. Please ring that notification bell so that way you will get updates of when my next videos are. And for the most part, my videos update on a Monday. Monday morning me, mountain time, uh, like around 10 o'clock usually. But I will let you guys know if it's coming any later than that. But thank you so much for watching. And remember, everybody, be awesome. Be you, Akemi, out. <laughs>